This screencast is on the government price controls of ceilings and floors. During the screencast, we're going to locate where ceilings are and know what they create. Then we're going to look at floors and we're going to look at what they create. And then we're going to locate the change in consumer and producer surplus from the ceilings and floors. And then we'll also take a look at deadweight loss um, that is created because of the ceilings and floors. When I call this a government price control, what I mean is that the government is establishing the price and it is not set at equilibrium. So when we think about our standard supply and demand graph, in this case here we'll be utilizing corn as our example, we can see here that we have um, our equilibrium set at a quantity of 10 and a price of 30. This green dot here is known as allocative efficiency. Remember that allocative efficiency is producing that right mix of goods or producing what society wants. This is where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. When we talk about a ceiling, we're talking about where the government is establishing a price control that is set below equilibrium. That sounds opposite, right, of where a ceiling is located, but by definition, it should make sense. So a ceiling is placed below equilibrium. In this case here, it's set at a price of $20. And so I put here a P subscript C um, to denote that. You can see that this is a binding price because it is set below equilibrium. And what the government is saying with the ceiling is that the price cannot go above where the government is establishing it at $20. Now, you could take the price if you wanted and sell it below the $20, but you can't go above. Um, well, a great example of this is rent control where you'll see that done in urban populations as a way to try to um, not make the housing prices go so large. When you set a price at $20, which is below the equilibrium of 30, you will see here that it hits the supply curve um, at a quantity supplied of five, and it hits the demand curve at a quantity demanded of 15. This creates what's called a disequilibrium because the quantity supplied does not equal the quantity demanded. Therefore, we are not at allocative efficiency. Instead, what happens is that a shortage is created. A shortage exists because the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. To calculate the shortage, you go where the quantity demanded minus the quantity supplied. So in this case here, our quantity demanded is at 15, and our quantity supplied is at 5. So at a ceiling of $20, you have a shortage of 10 units. Uh, one of the other things that's referred to about a ceiling is that in addition to a shortage being created, sometimes because producers know that there are consumers that are willing and able to buy it at a higher price, you'll have a black market that will exist with the selling of the products um, in order to create, get a higher price. A floor is opposite of a ceiling, and for a floor, this is set above equilibrium. In this case here, it's set at a price of 40, and so I have the P subscript F as a way to denote the price floor. What is happening here with this binding price is that the government is saying that you cannot charge a price lower than the $40. So in the last one where it was set below, it's obviously there to help the consumer. In this case here, what the government is doing is they're trying to help the producer. And so you can't charge a price that's lower than 40, even though the market is set below it at 30. This creates then when at 40, when you draw the line across, you see that it hits the quantity demanded at 6 and the quantity supplied at 13. This creates a disequilibrium. And so again, allocative efficiency is not achieved. With this disequilibrium, it's called a surplus. A surplus exists when the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. We can calculate surplus because we just take the quantity supplied minus the quantity demanded. In this case here, it's 13 quantity supplied minus 6 of the quantity demanded, so there is a surplus of 7 units. 
One thing, though, that can happen is that not always will you find that the government will establish their price controls at um, a price that will work. So a ceiling, again, a ceiling, is it placed above or below equilibrium? Remember, a ceiling says that you can't raise the price higher than where um, it should be set. So if the government were to put a ceiling at 40, what it's saying is that you can't raise this binding price or you can't have a price higher than the 40 that the government is establishing. Well, but you can go lower. And the market would be totally okay with that, right? Because they want it to be at 30. So the government's saying you can't have a price higher than 40, but it is saying then that you could have a price lower. If the government sets a ceiling above equilibrium instead of below equilibrium, this is not a binding price. And as a result then, there will not be the disequilibrium because the market in itself will work its way back to the price of 30 and quantity of 10. So therefore, allocative efficiency will be achieved. The next thing that we need to look at with these price controls is consumer and producer surplus. Um, just to review with consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is where consumers are willing and able to buy at a higher price, but they don't have to because the equilibrium price is set lower. When we look at producer surplus, producers are willing and able to sell it at a higher price, but they don't have to because, excuse me, they're willing and able to sell it at a lower price, but they don't have to because the equilibrium price is higher. So in locating the consumer surplus, you go below the demand curve and above equilibrium. And for the producer surplus, you go above the supply curve and below equilibrium. So when we look here at one that's achieving allocative efficiency, you can see that at our allocatively efficient point, you have all of the area covered by either consumer and producer surplus. Consumer surplus plus producer, plus producer surplus plus government regulation or revenue gives us the total surplus. So in, in this case here, this would be our total surplus. But when we look at it now with our price controls, let's look at a ceiling first. A ceiling, is it set above or below equilibrium? A binding ceiling is set below equilibrium. In this case here, it's set again at that price of 20. What we find is that again, the government is saying you cannot charge a price higher than where they have set it. You can charge it lower, but you cannot charge it higher than the 20. So obviously producers will go as high as they can because this is meant again to help out consumers um, with the market and not the producers. So when we talk about the consumer and producer surplus, we need to look at the quantity supplied, which is at five, versus the quantity demanded, that's at 15. Remember that creates a shortage because the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. When you are figuring out consumer and producer surplus, you need to have, um, you need to look at the first curve that is intersected by the price. In this case here, the first curve that is intersected is the supply curve. Now we already have a line going down that tells us the five units, but we need in order to figure out consumer and producer surplus, we need to have a line that goes and hits both of the curves at this quantity. So you want to make a straight line that goes up until it hits the demand curve. Now we can um, put in our consumer and producer surplus. So our consumer surplus below the demand curve and above equilibrium. You have to stop though at the five units because this is the only amount that's going to happen in this disequilibrium. You're not going to make it all the way over to 15 because producers are only going to be willing to sell five. And so therefore our consumer surplus is going to be not a triangle anymore, but it's going to be this area here. Producer surplus at this quantity of five, it's going to be above the supply curve and below this um, price that's being set here at $20. And so that's our producer surplus. So when we look at here, we're not at our allocatively efficient point of 10. And anytime we're not at allocatively efficient point, we need to figure out then what this dead weight loss is. So dead weight loss, it's also known as the efficiency loss. It's the loss of output to society when you're not at the allocatively efficient amount due to, that usually results from government intervention. 
Another way to look at it is that it's the loss of consumer and producer surplus. Remember, at our allocatively efficient point, you drew the line over at 30, and up here was the consumer surplus, and down here was the producer surplus. But now, because of this price control of the ceiling, you have a quantity that's smaller, and so as a result, this quantity here is the dead weight loss. All right, let's take a look at it with the floor. A floor, is it set above or below equilibrium? A binding floor is set above equilibrium because, again, with this one set at 40, what it's saying is that the government is saying it's a price control and you're not allowed to drop the price any lower than 40. Um, a great example of a price floor would be minimum wage. The, even though um, the market says that labor is worth a certain amount, the government is saying you have to pay them at a higher price. Um, and so they therefore are going to have this disequilibrium between the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. Um, another good example is with agriculture. The government sets price uh, floors a lot in order to try to help out farmers so that way then they feel they'll be able to um, survive in their industry. So with this here we need to again look at the disequilibrium that's created. We have a quantity demanded because you go at the price of 40 until it hits the demand curve, a quantity demanded of 6, and you have a quantity supplied of 13. Now, like I said, in order to figure out the consumer and producer surplus, you look at the first curve that is hit and you make sure that a line is connecting both, is hitting both of the curves. Since we drew it down, it's hitting the supply curve, so we don't need to do anything else. So now we need to put in our consumer and producer surplus. Consumer surplus, below the demand curve and above equilibrium. Producer surplus, above the supply curve and below this price that's set, this price control. And so therefore your producer surplus is going to be set here. Once again, we're not at allocative efficiency. And so we need to look at the loss that incurs because we're at an output that is less than the allocatively efficient amount. And this is our dead weight loss. This loss of consumer and producer surplus because of this government intervention in the form of a floor creates this dead weight loss here that you can even calculate by doing one half base time site.